happening po do I think sa REM po na stage do where we can have vivid dreams and we can remember our our dreams po. Mm -hmm. What what is the this stage of sleep? Check nyo. Kasi ano, pag nasa REM sleep ka, deep yan, di ba? So, deep, hindi mo ma-remember. So, sa non-REM ka, uh, non -rem po pala. Uh -huh. uh, sa non-REM ka, may mga stages yan. Stage 1, 2, and 3. Di ba? So, sige. Nire-relate lang natin yung biological basis sa ano, study ni Freud. Ang galing yan, no? But anyway, sige, go. Let's proceed. I-review na lang po namin, Doc. Yung stages ng sleep. So, um, in Freud's publication, entitled the... Um, the interpretation of dreams. He introduced the um, topographical model of the mind in which um, he divided the mind into three regions, the conscious system, the pre-conscious system, and the and, uh, non-conscious system. And each, each system has its own unique characteristics. Um, the conscious system is, is the part of the mind in which um, perceptions coming from the outside world or from within the body or mind are brought into awareness. So um, the preconscious system naman is uh, composed of those mental events, processes, and contents that can be brought into conscious awareness by the act of focusing attention. So it includes uh, memories and stored knowledge. For example, um, although Uh, most persons are not consciously aware of the appearance of their first grade teacher. Uh, they ordinarily convey this image mind by deliberately focusing attention on the memories. So the uh, preconscious system interfaces with both con unconscious and conscious features of the mind. And to reach conscious awareness, the contents of the unconscious must become linked with words and thus uh, become preconscious. So the preconscious um, system uh, serves to to maintain the repressive barrier and to censor unacceptable wishes and desires. Um, in the unconscious system, uh, its mental contents and processes are kept from conscious awareness through the force of uh, censorship or um, repression. According to Freud, um, instincts were thought to Uh, consists of sexual and self-preservative uh, drives and uh, the unconscious was thought to contain primarily the mental representations and derivatives of the sexual instinct. So the content of the unconscious is limited to wishes, wishes seeking fulfillment. Um, contents of the unconscious include young fears, violent motives, Um, unacceptable sexual desires, irrational wishes, um, immoral urges, uh, shameful experiences, and um, selfish needs. So, uh, Freud described to me mm. that it's mental function. Uh, before we pleasure. proceed into that, before, uh, uh, so, <clears throat> ano source mo <clears throat> Sheng, sa ano? Uh, ay, yung ano po, Dok, sa um, Kaplan po. Okay. Oo. So, for, eventually, Freud no, identified na the topographical model of the mind is not, ano, does not explain everything. No? Can you explain, Sheng, why? Yes po. Mm -mm. So, it, um, ay, tato. Yan. Yeah. 
So ito pa yung limitations of the topographical model of the mine. So number one, uh, defense mechanisms guarding against distress and wishes, feelings or thoughts are uh, not initially acceptable to to accessible to conscious awareness. And number two, patients demonstrate an unconscious need for punishment. So because topographical model of the mind cannot explain everything, no? the symptoms, he cannot relate. Uh, uh, we're in Freud, no? uh, parang he explored more into it. And then eventually this, the instinct or the drive theory surfaced, the right? So, sige daw. Kasi ginafollow ko rin yung libro. Opo. So, um, for this card to basic tenets of mental functioning, the the pleasure principle and reality principle. So, both principles in Freud's view are, are aspects of the ego functioning. So the pleasure principle is defined as an inborn tendency of the organism to avoid pain and to seek pleasure through the discharge of tension. Uh, the reality principle naman, um, is uh, considered to be a learned function closely related to the uh, maturation of the ego. So this principle modifies the, modifies the pleasure principle and requires uh, delay or postponement of the immediate gratification. So uh, now let's go to uh, the stages of, of psychosexual development. So these stages define how human personality uh, develops from birth up to adulthood. And for I believe that children... Uh, Sheng, will you be explaining... Ano? Yung the instinct or drive fury. Hi. The libido, the ego instincts, aggression, life and death instinct. Wait lang po, Doc. Ha? Hello? Nawala ba si Hello? Shek? Yeah, nandito po. Sorry, Doc. Ah, hindi po. Hindi ko nasali. Pwede sa next session po. Ah, okay. Okay. Sige, Apa. sige. Sige, let's ano on what you have. Apa. Okay. Apa. So, uh, so the stages of psychosexual development define how, how human personality develops from birth up to adulthood. So Freud believed that children experience unconscious sexual fixations as they grow older. Um, sexual urges change drastically after each stage. So without proper resolution following each stage, uh, one may experience fault in future personality. So the oral stage uh, starts at birth up to 18 months of age. So in this earliest stage, the mouth is the infant's primary source of pleasure. So meaning that the oral cavity is where uh, libidinal, libidinal energy is most focused. So infant gains pleasure through sucking and eating and the child ultimately develops a sense of comfort through oral uh, stimulation. So, so the objective of, of in this stage is to establish trust independence on, uh, on nursing and sustaining objects to establish comfortable expression and gratification of oral libidinal needs without excessive conflict or ambivalence from oral sadistic patients. So pathological traits 
um, fixation in this stage may result in issues with dependency and aggression. And moreover, the this fixation can lead to issues with eating, uh, drinking, smoking, and even obsessive habits like, for example, um, uh, nail biting. So um, excessive oral gratification or or the privation can result in libidinal fixations contributing to pathological traits, which may include um, excessive optimism, narcissism, narcissism pessimism, eh, or uh, demandingness. So for the character traits naman in this age, um, uh, the capacities to give, to give to and receive from others without excessive dependence or envy and to rely on others with sense of trust and, uh, and self-reliance. So the inner stage begins near the age of one when, when the child um, is just beginning to toilet train. So it extends roughly from one to three years of age. So the erogenous zone shifts from the oral cavity to the inner region with the realization that going to the bathroom is, can be a uh, pleasurable event. So this stage is promoted by maturation of the neuromuscular control over the sphincters, particularly in a sphincter. And the child begins to learn to postpone pleasure coming from inner tension. So Freud believed that the id, uh, the id of our unconscious represents the part of our being that finds pleasure in expelling feces, while uh, the ego and superego signify culture's pressure to resist uh, succumbing to uh, bodily functions. So the objective here um, in this stage is marked by greater striving for independence and separation from dependence on and control of parents. So um, objectives of sphincter control without over control or loss of control are matched by attempts to achieve autonomy and independence. So the pathological state um, derives from anal erotism and defense against it. Uh, the anal char character includes both effective and ineffective defenses. Um, effective defenses are um, or orderliness, obstinacy, stubbornness, willfulness, frugality, and parsimony. Ineffective defenses are heightened ambivalent, lack of tidiness, messiness, defiance, rage, and sadomasochistic uh, tendencies. So these are um, uh, typically seen in um, obsessive compulsive neurosis. For the character traits naman in this stage, a uh, successful resolution provides basis for development of personal autonomy, capacity for independence, and personal initiative without guilt. Um, the capacity for self-determining behavior without sense of shame, or self-doubt and um, the capacity for willing cooperation without um, excessive willfulness or diminution or um, defeat. So the phallic stage naman begins sometime during year three and continues until um, approximately the end of uh, year five or six years. So this is the most intricate of, of all the five stages. So the phallic phase is characterized by uh, a primary focusing of sexual interest, stimulation, and excitement in the genitals. Penis becomes the organ of principal interest to children of both sexes. So um, the phallic phase is associated with an increase in um, genital masturbation, accompanied by predominantly unconscious fantasies of sexual involvement with the opposite sex parent. So threats of uh, castration and their related anxiety are are connected with guilt over masturbation and audible wishes. So during this phase, uh, audible involvement conflict are established and um, consolidated. So the objective of this stage is to focus on um, erotic interest in the genital area and genital function. So this lays the foundation for, for gender identity. Pathological traits, um, issues, uh, issues focus on castration in males males and penis and the female. So uh, the influence of frustration, anxiety, and penis and the, and the defenses against them and the patterns of identification are primary 
primary determinants of the development of human character. For the character trait, uh, the phallic stage provides the foundation for an emerging um, sense of sexual identity, curiosity without embarrassment, um, initiative without guilt, as well as mastery over internal processes and impulses. Resolution of the audible conflict uh, gives rise to internal structural capacities for regulation of drive impulses. So um, the internal sources of uh, this regulation are the ego and superego. Uh, based on uh, introjection and identification derived primarily from the uh, parental figure. So in the Oedipus complex, males are sexually intrigued by their mothers and jealous of their father's inclusion. So while the boy's kid desires to kill the father, the ego, uh, while working on the reality principle, um, it realizes that the father is bigger and stronger. So the boy fears the father and then he develops castration anxiety. So this castration anxiety induces repression of sexual desire for the mother and hostility towards the father. So the boy will develop fear. Um, he will develop fear. The father will pursue a punishment for his uh, sexual feeling uh, towards the mother. So this conflict results when the boy employs the defense mechanism of identification or to take on the, the personality characteristics of the father. So unresolved uh, complexes uh, complex can lead to uh, difficulty in dealing with authority figures and a tendency to have trouble with uh, loving relationships. Why Oedipus complex? Nga? What is the story mm. of Oedipus? Yung, ano po, no? Yung, si, Sa mga adults, uh, daw, let's ask. Kasi very, ano Si ano? Mayso. Good morning po, Doc. So yung sa Oedipus, Doc, ang pagkakaalala ko po, uh, it's parang in Greek mythology na I think he killed his father and married his mother. So, yun po yung basis ng Oedipus complex ko. Okay. Sige. Thank you, May. Okay. Proceed. Hello, Shang. Hello, hello, po. Naglag, yes. Hello, po. Ayan, uh -huh. parinig na po. Okay. So, the electric object, shaman, uh, um, will begin to become attracted to their fathers and fall into peace and deterioration. In contrast to uh, castration anxiety in males, so there is a sense of competition with the mother for the father's um, affection. So failure to resolve either of the complexes um, can lead to fixation in this stage and the phallic, phallic uh, character includes breathlessness, um, self-assuredness, and narcissism. So Freud also believed that fixation in this stage sometimes resulted in homosexuality due to, due to the child's um, inability to identify properly with a rival parent. So the, this gives rise to um, the gender identity problems. So um, let's go to uh, the latency period. So this stage of um, relative instinctual Biases or inactivity of the sexual drive. Um, and uh, from about five to six years of age until about 11 to uh, 13 years of age. 
So this stage is the transitioning period between the phallic and the genital stages. So um, in this stage, there is um, institution of the superego and further maturation of ego functions, leading to greater degrees of control of instinctual impulses and motives. So this is uh, primarily um, of primarily homosexual boys and girls in same sex friendship, as well as uh, sublimation of libidinal and aggressive energies into energetic learning and play activities, exploring the environment and becoming more uh, proficient in dealing with the world of things and persons around them. So it is a period for, for development of important skills. And um, uh, children in this stage uh, repress their sexual desires to focus on areas uh, in academics and athletics. So uh, the objective here in this stage um, is uh, further integration of uh, identification and consolidation of the gender and sexual identity and uh, the relative uh, quiescence and control of instinctual impulses allow for, for um, development of ego apparatuses and mastery of skills. Uh, pathological traits uh, dangers in the latency period can arise either from the lack of lack of development of inner controls or an excess of them. The lack of control can lead to failure to to sufficiently uh, sublimate energies in the interest of learning and the development of skills. And an excess of inner control can lead to premature closure of personality development and precocious elaboration of obsessive character traits. So for the character traits in this stage, the child can develop a sense of sense of industry and capacity for mastery, uh, mastery of objects and concepts that allow autonomous functioning and a sense of initiative without risk, uh, without risk of failure or defeat or a sense of inferiority. So the genital stage naman, um, uh, it's from the onset of puberty from approximately 11 to, to 13 years of age until young adulthood. Um, in this stage, uh, physiological maturation of systems of the genital functioning and hormonal system uh, leads to intensification of instinct work, particularly, particularly uh, libidinal drives. So following the latency stage, the the child's sexual urges are aroused once more here in this stage. So, so this time the erogenous zone shifts to the, the genitals. So in this stage, there is regression in personality organization, which reopens conflicts of previous stages of psychosexual development and provides opportunity for resolution of these conflicts in context of achieving mature sexual and adult identity. So this is called the second individuation of uh, it's like a process of um, process of self realization in this uh, in this stage. So in this stage, also the person is transformed from a pleasure seeking narcissistic infant into a reality oriented socialized adult. Um, the phases of oral, anal, and phallic stages are fused with gentle impulses, and the principal function here in this stage is um, reproduction. So objectives here in this stage, ultimate separation from dependence on and attachment to parents, achievement of a mature sense of personal identity and acceptance and integration of, of adult roles and functions that permit new adaptive integration with social expectations and cultural values. Uh, for the pathological traits, uh, previous unsuccessful resolutions and fixations in various spaces will produce uh, pathological defects in emerging adult personality and defects in identity formation. Mm -hmm. So, for example, no, improper transitioning into the genital stage may result in, uh, in failure to form heterosexual relationships in the future. For the char character traits in this stage, fully mature personality with capacity for full and satisfying genital potency and consistent sense of identity. So this is the basis for uh, capacity for self-realization 
and meaningful participation in areas of work, love, and in creative and productive uh, application to satisfying and meaningful goals and uh, goals and values. So let's go to the structural, structural theory of the mind. So this structural model of the psychic apparatus is the cornerstone of ego psychology. So there are three provinces, id, ego, and superego, and they are distinguished by their different functions. So the id, so Freud used the term id to refer to a reserve of unorganized instinctual drives. Um, operating under the domination of the primary process, the id lacks the capacity to uh, it lacks the capacity to delay or to modify instinctual drives uh, with which an infant is born. So the id, however, should not be viewed as uh, it should not be viewed as uh, synonymous with the unconscious uh, because both the ego and superego also they have unconscious component uh, then the ego so the, the the ego spans all the three uh, topographical dimensions of conscious the conscious and the unconscious logical and abstract thinking and verbal expression are associated with conscious and preconscious functions of the ego and the uh, defense mechanism resides in the unconscious domain of the ego so the ego is the executive organ of the psyche. It controls perception and contact with reality. And through the defense mechanisms available to it, it controls the delay and the uh, modulation of drive expression. So the pressures of external, the pressures of external reality enable the ego to appropriate the energies of the id to do its work. So as the ego brings influences from the external world to bear on the id, it simultaneously substitutes the reality principle for the pressure for the pleasure principle. So the superego naman establishes and maintains the an individual's uh, moral conscience on the basis of a complex system of ideals and values internalized from the parent. Uh, children internalize their parental values and standards at about the age of five to five to six. So uh, the superego then serves as an agency that provides ongoing uh, scrutiny of a person's behavior, thoughts, and feelings, and make comparisons with expected standards of behavior. So these activities occur largely, um, it occurs unconsciously. So the ego ideal is often regarded as a component of the superego. So it is an agency that prescribes what a person should do according to the internalized standards and values. Uh, the superego, uh, by contrast, is an agency of moral conscience that dictates what a person should not do. So throughout the latency period um, and thereafter, persons continue to build on early identifications through their contact with admired figures, contribute to the formation of moral standards, aspirations, and, and um, ideas. So let's go to the defense mechanism. So uh, defenses can be grouped according to uh, the relative degree of maturity associated with them. So narcissistic defenses are uh, the most primitive and appear in children and in persons who are uh, say or, or um, psychotic. So um, immature defenses someone are seen in adolescents and some non-psychotic patients. Neurotic or anxiety defenses are encountered in obsessive, compulsive, and hysterical patients as well as in adults um, when they are under stress. So defenses under under the narcissistic and psychotic defenses uh, share the common note of avoiding, negating, and distorting reality. For exa examples are uh, projection, denial, and distortion. So let's go to uh, projection. So uh, 
projection is perceiving and reacting to unacceptable inner impulses and their derivatives as though they were outside the self. So on a psychotic level, some delusions about external reality, usually persecutory, includes both perception of one's own feelings and those of another with subsequent acting on the perception. So this is called the psychotic paranoid delusion. So um, projection is, um, it's like placing, placing one's own unacceptable thoughts into others as if thoughts belong to them and that means not to oneself. So for example is, uh, example here is a woman who is attracted to her sister's husband, but uh, she denies this and she believes that uh, the husband is really attracted to her. So next is um, denial. Uh, psycho psychotic denial of external reality affects perception of external reality more than perception of internal reality. At the psychotic level, the denied reality may be replaced by a fantasy or delusion. Example, seeing but refusing to acknowledge what one sees or hearing and negating what is actually heard. But uh, not, all, not all denial is necessarily psychotic. It may function in, it may function in the service of more uh, neurotic or adaptive objectives. And um, denial also avoids becoming aware of some painful aspect of reality. So it's like um, a blocking. It's like uh, you're blocking out or, or uh, you're disowning painful thoughts and feelings. So for example, uh, a psychiatric patient um, tells the psychiatrist that um, she had no uh, problems and she doesn't need to talk with the psychiatrist. Another example is uh, a diabetic patient eating chocolate and, uh, and candies. And uh, another example, spending money, spending money freely when you know you are broke. And um, another example is um, when, when your husband is, is alcoholic, you would just say, uh, my husband is a social drinker. So it's blocking out the painful thoughts and feelings. So next is um, distortion. So uh, this is the uh, grossly reshaping the experience of um, external reality to suit inner needs. So it includes um, unrealistic megalomanic beliefs, hallucinations, wish fulfilling delusions, and um, employing sustained feelings of delusional grandio delusional grandiosity, superiority, or entitlement. So let's go to the immature defense. So this is common in pre-adolescent years and in adult character disorders. So often uh, mobilized by anxieties related to intimacy or its loss. Although regarded as socially awkward and undesirable, they often moderate with improvement in interpersonal relationships or with increased uh, personal maturity. So let's go to acting out. So uh, it, acting out is the direct expression of unconscious wish or impulse in action to avoid being conscious of the accompanying effect. So unconscious fantasy involving objects um, is lived out and impossibly enacted in the behavior, thus gratifying impulse more than uh, prohibition against. It involves uh, chronically giving into impulses to, to avoid tension that would result from postponement of their expression. So example is self-injury. Um, performing an extreme behavior uh, in order to in order to express uh, in order to express thoughts or feelings that uh, the person feels um, incapable of otherwise expressing. Um, another example would be uh, instead of saying I'm I'm angry with you, um, a person who acts out may throw may throw a book or punch a hole through the wall. So next is blocking. So inhibition usually uh, temporary in nature of affect, especially but possibly also thinking and impulses. So um, it is close to repression and its effect 
but has component of tension arising from inhibition of impulse action. So it's like um, your temporary, uh, temporarily or transiently inhibiting your uh, thinking. So it occurs when you refuse to accept. Um, uh, it occurs when you refuse to accept uh, reality or facts. So you you block external events or circumstances from the mind. So uh, so you don't have to deal with the emotional impact. Next is hypochondriacy. So this is the transformation of reproach toward others arising from bereavement, loneliness, or unacceptable aggressive impulses into self-reproach in the form of somatic, uh, somatic complaints. So real illness may also be overemphasized or exaggerated for its evasive and, re and regressive possibilities. So responsibility may be avoided, guilt may be circumvented, and instinctual impulses may be warded off. So here no, in hypochondriasis, no, um, uh, it's like uh, you are, uh, uh, it's the transformation no, of recourse to one, toward the others, uh, arising from, uh, from the feelings of loneliness and other unacceptable um, thoughts and impulses into self-reproach. So instead of the patient will feel uh, pain, illness, in other um, in other forms of somatic complaint. So next is introjection. So uh, it involves internalization of characteristics of objects with the goal of ensuring closeness to and constant presence of the object. So anxiety consequent to separation or tension arising out of ambivalence toward the object is thus diminished. And if the object is lost, Introjection nullifies or negates loss by taking on the characteristics of objects, thus, in a sense, internally uh, preserves it. So examples, uh, example, uh, for example, while the mother is gone or is away, um, the young girl would discipline her younger brother, just like her mother would. Another example is a child um, adopts the style and manner mannerisms of a favorite cinema star. Next is passive aggressive behavior. So it, it is the aggression toward object. The aggression toward an object is expressed indirectly and ineffectively through passivity, masochism, and turning against that. So these people uh, procrastinate and do not perform tasks um, adequately and make excuses for their uh, make ex they make excuses for their behavior. So they uh, they manipulate themselves into into dependent positions and uh, and force others to become responsible for them. So they turn their anger against themselves. And uh, also, um, it also um, self uh, demeaning, clowning, and frankly, uh, destructive acts. Next is projection. So, uh, projection on the non-psychotic level involves attributing one's own unacknowledged feelings to others. It includes severe prejudice, rejection of intimacy, through suspiciousness, hypervigilance to external danger, and injustice, injustice collecting. So it operates for 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 relatively to uh, to interject interjection. So misattributing or misinterpreting motives, attitudes, feelings or intentions of all this. So examples, no? um, a spouse angry to a significant other for not listening, when in fact it is he who, who is not listening. Or another example, no? uh, a wife angry at her husband, accusing him of cheating, when in fact she is the one who cheats while at work. So it's like placing her own um, Unacceptable behavior or, or, or to his to her husband. Next is some um, regression. So regression is a return to previous stage of development or 
functioning to avoid anxieties or hostilities involved in later stages. So return to earlier points of fixation and budding modes of behavior previously given up, and it reflects the basic tendency to achieve instinctual gratification or to escape instinctual tension by returning to earlier moods and levels of gratification. So next is, uh, next is schizoid fantasy. So this is the tendency to use fantasy and to indulge in autistic retreat for the purpose of conflict resolution and gratification. So it is used to escape uh, and as a means of gratification whereby uh, the other people are not required for emotional involvement. Example here um, is daydreaming during conversation to avoid intimacy or to ward off for them. And then uh, somatization is the conversion of psychic derivatives into bodily symptoms. So it is the tendency to react with somatic rather than psychic manifestation. So it is the unconscious channeling of uh, repressed emotions into somatic symptoms. Okay. So I think I know we have to stop here. I say it's already nine and you have to go to the OPD. But 